Hello, my name is Rhonda Gilgrave. For the past several years, it's been our great pleasure to host a celebration of poetry in the library in honor of National Poetry Month. While we can't come together physically, we can come together in spirit to hear a few poems by some gifted members of our beloved community. Poetry has a way of transcending ordinary language and experience, of expressing what feels inexpressible and accessing our deepest selves. In these strange times, I think many of us are longing for deeper connection and expression. I hope you can find some of that in these lovely poems. Enjoy. Hello, I'm Professor Angela Shannon. I'm from the English and Journalism Department. And my poem is Bethel Without the Bubble. We are Bethel without the bubble, without the transparent covering over customs and campus and chapel, over classrooms and dorm rooms. Bethel without the bubble, but still Bethel with God's salt. Bethel without the bubble, but still Bethel with the light light streaming through the academic center, the CLC, the DC and Great Hall, a thousand lights streaming through the bubble. And you, my friend, no matter where you sit or stand, you still belong. No matter near or far, you still belong. Duck and cover. In the middle of cursive writing practice, so we could all write neat as Coca-Cola. Or that worn tale about little George Washington and the cherry tree. Or a foray into the new math designed to help us outsmart the reds. Without warning, teacher would switch the lights off and on furiously. In a flash, we dashed under our little desks and covered our little heads with our little hands, giggling. The whole thing pointless should a small son visit school for show and tell. Glaring down on our crumb on the cosmic sleeve was the same nuclear fire worshipped by our ancestors, no longer far enough away to appear divinely benign. And still we giggled. Still, at recess we played under that cold and callous sky, clicks clicking and jocks jocking like normal. Still. Ray bragged how he got to peek up Lisa's dress during the drills. Still, the feckless toughs who hated integration ran by elementary school throwing rocks through windows and shouting, Duck and cover! America, so well practiced, so well prepared. Rogue. 160 years away, a slave is squatting in the midnight hedgerows. His body stinks of desperation. Metal spittle stings his mouth. Heart drums so loudly in his ears, he fears the dogs will hear. He picks his way towards an angelic voice that cuts the moonless gloom, singing, Steal away, steal away, steal away to Jesus. He praises God to be unbound. His master praises God when he is found, and in order to obey the laws of heaven, he hangs the slave beneath a leafy haven. At this, the earth shook, lightning spilt out of the sky like blood from a slit artery, an ocean fell, and towns and farms flooded. Cemeteries gave up their caskets like the rapture, occupants missing, empty clothes strewn as far north as the Monongahela River. Northern papers called it a celestial event, God bearing witness from heaven. A hundred and sixty years away, there hangs a luminous body discovered by astronomers, the first of many, with a number but no name. It is designated rogue because it circles 
no star. Of parts and partings. There's the arrival. It's the one time most of us will ever be treated like a head of state, complete with motorcycle escort. There's the line, accordion of anguish discordance, waiting to share condolences and memories that stretch remembrance. There's the encomiums, like a bride's veil lifted for that binding kiss to seal the one promise that cannot be broken. There's the partings, like soil plowed for sowing, seed and zippered shut, and we finally submit, like farmers, to the mercy of seasons. There is the gathering, as with the opaline moon we rise, stand confident as exclamation marks, and speak, every word a kaleidoscope of light. This is Reichen Krebs, reading to the graduating senior, 2020. To the graduating senior, today I have no words for you, yet something must be said. Something to honor the pain, to acknowledge the hurt, to respond to the crushing weight of the nothing we are left with. To the athletes, for whom this was the culmination of years of dedicated practice, of years of passionate competition, of years of camaraderie and community, I say, well done. This is not the way to end a career, but it is here. You've given heaping portions of yourself to your sport, and though you have not gotten the finale you deserve, you will reap the benefits for years to come. Remember the dedication, the sweat, the friendship, the adrenaline. Use those things to drive yourself, to push yourself to win, to continue to achieve despite the loss you are taking now. To the artists and performers, for whom this was the final send-off, who should have had a final piece to exhibit, a final show to perform, a final concert to play, or solo to sing, I say, well done. You've been told a thousand times that the show must go on, yet now, in your shining moment, the show is done. However, that will not stop you. You will continue to create, to perform, to pursue your dreams and passions. You will continue to express yourself for many to marvel at, or even just for yourself, to validate your own spark of life. This is not the end of your craft. You may have lost a moment in what should have been your spotlight, but the creative light within you does not die today. To the scientists and academics for whom this was the finish line, who wanted to produce a final project, a final paper, to show the merits of your work, I say, well done. Though you may still have the work, it will not be the same. Finish strong and see it through, whatever it may be. Dedication to academics is not an easy task. To commit to the pursuit of excellence is a road fraught with worry. To conquer procrastination and push through to success is a worthy effort and it will reflect in your life ahead. To the teachers, the nurses, the business majors, to the athletes and the student workers, to the world changers and the reconcilers, to the friends and the roommates, I say, well done. This is nothing like what we all saw coming. This is nothing like what we all wanted. When I read the chapter summary for senior year, I think I missed this part. Allow yourself to hurt, reflect on the times you had, and allow yourself to realize what you are missing. Reminisce on the good things that make missing the next thing so painful. Reach out to those around you. Thank those that made everything what it was. Appreciate those that made your experience worth it. People are what make life worth living, and it is for the people that this all must happen. Lastly, to the graduating senior, today I have some words for you, yet nothing can be said. The next readers are finalists in the Jerry Healy Poetry Prize, an award established to honor the memory of beloved former English professor Jerry Healy, a towering presence physically and figuratively. His family created this prize to honor his deep love of poetry. The theme for this year's contest is healing. These poems will be published in a special section of the Coeval, Bethel's literary magazine, and three winners will be awarded in May. Hi, my name is Lee Yagi, and this is my poem, Better Than This. 
Handshaking, heartbreaking, as I hang up the phone. You deserve better than this. Breath shallow, feels like I'm heading to the gallows as I drive to the hospital. You deserve better than this. Waiting, every second I'm hating as I listen to the doctor's bad news. You deserve better than this. Eyes weeping, anger creeping as I watch you get lowered into the ground. You deserve better than this. Long nights, fighting for what's right as the lawyer looks at me with pity. You deserve better than this. Head spinning, patience spinning as I watch him enter the courtroom. You deserve better than this. All sleep destroyed, I'm suddenly void as I hear him admit to drinking and driving. You deserve better than this. Thinking about him makes me cold, but it's your memory I hold. As I let my heartache grow into resentment and anger, you deserve better than this. A few years later, I have a new neighbor. It's him, out of jail. You deserve better than this. Weeks pass, I relapse, and then I remember. You deserve better than this. Inhale, about to bail, as I walk across the street, because you deserve better than this. Ring the bell, this is hell, as he opens the door, and I keep in mind, you deserve better than that. Step inside, put aside my pride, as he talks about how the guilt has been eating him alive, because he knows that you deserve better than that. Never again, he claims, I feel a little shame, as he's a good man and he regrets his actions. We know you deserved better. He wants to take a stand against what he manned, as he doesn't want it to happen to anyone else ever again, because everyone deserves better. His name is Jack, and I decide to go back. As we learn more about each other, I realize he deserved better than that. I don't want our conversations to end. He's become my friend. As I better understand his pain, I realize I'm ready to move on. You deserve better than that. He deserved better than that. So my new friend and I share a smile, the first real one in a while, because can you really heal without learning to forgive? Therapy by Ellie Norlin After years of wandering, I finally found my therapy. Things that filled the gaps nobody could ever replace. I finally found my therapy. The music that put words to my pain nobody could ever replace. A freedom I could now grasp. The music that put words to my pain, hushing the chaos in my mind. A freedom I could now grasp, dwelling in the openness of a melody. Hushing the chaos in my mind, I began to feel whole again. Dwelling in the openness of a melody, as others expressed what I never could. I began to feel whole again, discovering a peace I'd never felt, as others expressed what I never could and that will forever be a part of me. Hi, my name is Sierra Bilby, and I'm going to be reading my poem, Exhale. There are traces of living, this bed unmade, and a cereal bowl in the sink, singing barely audible above the shower water and a pair of dirty sneakers that tracked the outside in on the soul, disarrayed pieces of soul. Oh, I've left traces of loving. Songs added to playlists titled with your name, late night phone calls that leave my head buzzing with something like joy, sweetly bruised collarbones tucked under turtlenecks, memories of ice cream cones by the muddy lake shore that blur around the edges. The feeling is strong, but the image grows thin, translucent. There are traces of leaving, forgotten space on social media walls where pictures used to be, Silence that burns across distance when there are no words left on the tongue. Songs I can't sing anymore. Space I fear to take up. Wondering how I let myself unlearn so much of me. How I could have left so much of myself behind to be somebody else's drafted artwork. Attempted and discarded. And still there are traces of living. Crumpled up receipts in the center console and open blinds that let light fall dappled on the unmade bed. The cereal bowl in the same spot, and new sneakers, with new dirt pressed into the soles. Exhale. I am the same in this soul. Thank you. Hi, I'm Anita Stassen, and this is Mother's Medicine. My mother taught me to lick my wounds, so by the time the sun had cooled, I was fresh and pain a weak aftertaste. My mother taught me resilience only rebounds so far until it's merely jumping on cracked pavement, knees knocking in the solidity of it all. 
Oh, how the bones broke, chipped among smudged remains of a chalk-drawn dream. And I laid myself down to sleep that night. No mother, no moon. A simple prayer that tomorrow I would breathe and the breath would come sweet like spools of magic down the lungs. My mother, she would have smiled at such ambition, gripped my hand like warm power, and drawn me into life. This is Rhonda Gilbraith. I'm going to read two poems that feel especially resonant to me right now. The first of these is called The Peace of Wild Things, and it's by Wendell Berry. When despair for the world grows in me, and I wake in the night at the least sound, in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be, I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water, and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things, who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water, and I feel above me the day-blind stars waiting with their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world and am free. This last poem is called Separation and it's by W.S. Merwin. Your absence has gone through me like thread through a needle. Everything I do is stitched with its color. Thank you for joining us for our virtual celebration of poetry. And thanks to all those who generously share their work. We miss you and look forward to a time when we can see each other in the flesh. In the meantime, grace, health, and peace be yours. <laughs>